Does that work? Ah, oh, it works. <laughs> yes. I just want to acknowledge the folk who are joining us live um, on YouTube from around the world. It's good to have you with us. So I just uh, would like to explain the practicalities. We've got a simple welcome from me, and then I'll be reading a poem. We're going to have a slideshow with some pictures and some music. Um, there'll be a time for tributes. Various people are going to be speaking. I'll speak a blessing. And then just a simple closing statement. So quite simple, quite relaxed. And uh, I want to say at this point that tears are welcome. Um, we bring our emotions, we bring our memories, we bring lifetimes of experience. And so feel free to express your emotions as you need to. Just a practicality, the bathrooms are through that door, just past the bar. Some of you may need the bar. And then uh, bathrooms are uh, in a small lounge just past the bar. So times like this are, they're sacred. they set aside. We, we're in a little bubble of time and space here in a place that Sandy really loved being and it seems to me from what I know of Sandy that she loved places she loved beautiful places and she really settled into a place and made it her own and shared that place with people and so I think it's appropriate that we're in a place that Sandy loved very much so we're celebrating Sandy's life we're honoring her and the particular kind of person that she was. We're remembering her, and those memories mean completely different things to different people. And we're giving thanks. That's really our, our focus today. So I'm going to pray just a very short opening prayer. Comforting and compassionate God, be with us all as we suffer this loss and ache with the pain of grieving. Give us a glimpse of the way it will be when love will never be taken away, when life itself will not be diminished, and when all that we hold most precious will live and remain with us forever. Amen. So on the back of your program is a poem, which just seemed to be most appropriate for this particular time. I'll read it. Under a soft blanket of fallen leaves, safe in the hush of the whispering trees, I have come home. My time here on earth is now done. All the noise and the clamor, the joy and the pain, the powerful life force that drove me onwards has slipped away into the quiet of eternity, and I am at peace. From now on, I will dance through your memories, threading thoughts of love through your heart. The pain of loss will gradually ease, and the sadness will lift. The days will be lighter, and the nights not so long, for I am still here. When you walk through this place, you will feel me in the gentle touch of the breeze on your face, in the sunlight dappling the forest floor, in the murmur of the branches high above you. I am all around. I have returned to the place from whence I came, to the elements that created me. The earth that gave me the life I so loved has now welcomed me back to her, to be at one with all her beauty. Here, under my blanket of fallen leaves, I have found my resting place. I have come home. So we're going to look at some pictures of Sandy and places that she found deeply meaningful. And we're going to have a couple of songs along with those, and those words are in the program.
And you'll find certain words in these songs will stand out to you, and it's good to linger with those and just dwell on the, 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 the memories that they hold and the happiness that that means to you. I see trees of green Red roses too I see them blue For me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces. Of people going by, I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow, they're like much more than I ever knew. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world.
So now is an opportunity for us to, to share, and the family are going to share first various tributes to Sandy, and then there'll be an opportunity for anyone who wants to speak to, to come up and speak. Just to set the scene, I suppose, um, I've noticed that uh, the mountains are central to Sandy, a, a fierce loyalty to her family, and I can see that here. And those of you who are uh, watching this over the, the long distance between us, uh, I can sense that you also knew that fierce loyalty. She was very much her own person, a distinctive individual, and didn't uh, try to hide that, uh, which is wonderful. Um, there's the great significance of Tabang Kulu and what that meant to her and what it means to you. And then, uh, I think in keeping with her personality, the fact that ACDC was uh, one of her favorite uh, musical groups. So, Jimmy, you'd like to come up and speak. Yeah. Well, thanks for the dark glasses, Daniel. I can hide behind these things. You need to, you need to speak into the microphone. Shall I speak into this one? How's that okay? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, John, thanks to you. Uh, you were sort of thrown in the deep end by, by Tracy. Uh, we know that Tracy's a very persuasive kind of person, and she had decided she wanted John, and here he is. And that's how it works in actual fact. Uh, thanks to Craig as well from Mosaic. Craig, you've put together a great show, and I'm very Im impressed with your professionalism. You really are fantastic. So when one of you pop off, he's the guy to go to. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for taking the time to come here uh, to celebrate Sandy's life, not to mourn her death, because she was a character all of her own in actual fact. It's been a tough few years for us, uh, for the family, for her, for friends. Uh, and I think we all feel and hope that she's now in a place where she's got peace and she's at ease with everything. That's what we all hope for in actual fact. Now, Tracy and Brett, we've sort of put together a little program. The program never works according to how you put it together. So we'll try it from Tracy's side first. Oh, yes, we've got a wave at Matt. This, yeah. a, this is just a quick wave to Matt. We should give him a Mexican wave as a group. But Matt, hi. <laughs> um, the first message is actually from Matt, from Matt, Bex, Callum, and Michaela. So I'm going to ask John to read it because I don't think I have the emotional capacity to deal with his message and mine. So Matt, I'm going to hand over to John. So this message comes from Matt. Bex, Callum, and Michaela. Mum, I am truly grateful and privileged to have you as my mother. The love, support, and encouragement you have given me, I have taken everywhere with me. Thank you. I have many fond memories of our time together, either sharing your love of nature, walking or singing songs in the car. She always said I had a great voice. Mum was a good runner, but not as quick as me when I had misbehaved. She would chase me down the firebreak at Tabankulu when I was due a hiding, but unable to catch me. She would shout and remind me that I had to come home for food. I would stay out as long as I could before the hunger pangs became too great, returning home with my tail between my legs. Her love of the Zulu people and language is something that she earned great respect for and certainly passed that on to me. Her and I would talk Zulu when we didn't want Dad to know what we were talking about. <laughs> Mum taught me to be kind and always respect people no matter where they have come from. We could not ask for a more caring and loving mother. My family were fortunate to spend quality time with Sandy on our visits to South Africa. My wife, Bex, met Sandy in 2002 when she visited the country for the first time. Bex will always remember Sandy as a formidable woman as in her eyes, she was impressive in stature, intense, and incredibly capable. From the start, Sandy inspired fear and respect in Matt's new girlfriend. 
This was evidenced by Sandy's swift probing and consequent requirement that Bex never support the Australian cricket or rugby teams if things progressed between her and Matt. Not sure if she was joking or serious. Bex made the promise to only barrack for South African teams. She wasn't game enough to tell Sandy that she really didn't follow much sport. Over the years, Bex came to know her mother-in-law as kind, caring and incredibly dedicated to her family. Many of Sandy's traits live on in Matt, a gentle tone, sometimes wicked sense of humour and a deep love for those special to them. Matt and Bex's children, Callum and Michaela, were able to forge a special bond with their South African grandparents, even though they lived so far away. Their gran impacted each of them in different ways as she shared her love of the Zulu language, animals and drawing. Michaela holds special the times her gran would sit with her to draw. Sandy was incredibly talented, and they would talk about animals. Gran read to Michaela and introduced her to the story of Tippy, a girl who grew up in Africa surrounded by wild animals and who had a special bond with them. Sandy's love of South Africa and the Zulu language was passed on to Callum from a very young age when she would quietly speak to him in this foreign tongue. She brought him toys from Matt's childhood to play with, let him climb the tree in her yard like a monkey, and listened patiently to his crazy ideas and stories. Whilst the times Callum and Michaela spent with their gran were nowhere near as long as each wished for, they were filled with walking adventures, storytelling, and lots of laughing. As they enter their adult years, the influence of their South African grandparents will follow. Mother, mother-in-law, and gran... Sandy will be sorely missed, but fondly and always remembered. Fly high with the birds across the mountain ranges. We will look for you in the rugged landscapes and feel your presence in nature. Mum, you will always be in our hearts and minds and forever loved. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, it's my turn. Not sure how I'm going to cope with this, so bear with me. Charlie, don't you want a seat? There are lots here, eh? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm just dealing with a bit of technology here. Ah. You know, when you get over 50, it's a challenge. No boomer comments. <laughs> it says no boomer comments. So, thank you to each and every one of you for being here for this final farewell. Um, and I know that all of you have your own special place in my mum's heart. So thank you, every single one of you. Um, not everyone who wanted to be here could make it, and Matt in particular was very sad that he couldn't join us. Um, thanks too to my dad, who has been with her every step of the way over this journey. Thanks, Dad. I need my glasses, the writing's small. I've missed my mum for a number of years now. However, the finality of her death is still just incredibly difficult to deal with. She was the best mother I could ever have had. I always knew she would be there for me, whatever I managed to get up to, and I managed to get up to a fair amount. She took on the role with a total commitment to loving, protecting, and caring for us. As mentioned by Matt, she loved drawing, walking, reading, and just spending time with the people that she loved, which included most of you. Her happy place was the Drakensberg and living at Tabankulu. And although she was a self-declared hermit who avoided social occasions, if you got her there, she was the life and soul of the party. She professed to hate cooking, although she did plenty of it with exceptional skill. I actually remember her hosting a dinner party where she managed to create like six different vegetable dishes, along with a main, a salad, and one of her incredibly legendary desserts. It has been absolutely awful to watch her lose her ability to do all of the things that she loved over the last few years, even the things she hated, like cooking. She's lived a life she would have hated, with a passion that only she was capable of over the last while. 
During this time as a family, we are incredibly grateful to the carers and the sisters and the staff at the care centre at Amber Valley. They've just been amazing. They gave so much of themselves to look after her. And everyone who knew her well, which is all of you, will acknowledge how difficult she was capable of being. So it couldn't have been easy for them. And so we have arrived at this point. After a lifetime of having a mum, she is gone. So what remains are wonderful memories of so much that I will cherish until my time comes. So rest in peace, my darling mother. No, no other time have those words, words seemed more profound or meaningful. Thanks, Trace. Um, I'm going to say a, a few words from my wife, Karen, who unfortunately can't be here just to hold the fort in New Zealand. Um, uh, Sandy did not suffer fools and, uh, gladly and lived life as a free spirit, unafraid, of, uh, unafraid to be herself and to speak her mind. Her fierce love of her children was always evident and she was a pillar of strength and support for them. She found joy and peace in the beauty of the outdoors and she taught us all to appreciate the simple pleasures in life. I always treasure the moments we shared and the conversations we had and the lessons she imparted. Yeah, so from my perspective, um, as the rest of the family have alluded to, mum was an extremely special woman and an amazing mother. I'd like to though reflect on some of the aspects of her life and give some anecdotes because it wouldn't, in no, you know, reflection would be complete without talking about some things um, that were truly mum. Um, as many of you know, mum decided that living on the bluff near the beach was not for her. This was not, uh, was in part due to her love of nature, but also maybe because of what living near the sea did to her hair. Those who knew mum will Remember her standard bank, I think, hat, which kept her, her hair partially straight, at least, even when she was in Tab and Kulu. Um, Dad loved Mum so dearly, and despite being a city boy, was lured away to a mud hut, literally it was, on top of a hill, so that Mum could live the lifestyle she dreamed of, which, as part of the Hobday clan, something Catherine, her sister-in-law, uh, refers to as having an affliction of the bush and long drop mentality. <laughs> um, Mum loved interacting with people, but on her own, t our own terms. And being on top of a hill meant that she could see people coming. <laughs> enabling one of two options, either pretending that no one was at home or escaping down a fire break, but lit which literally happened once. With us in tow. Um, apo and apologies to those of you here today who may have suspected she was at home. Get, get, getting, getting, there, uh, getting there for the first few decades involved driving on extremely bad roads and a very steep clay hill, and some of you will remember that. Mum prided herself on being the one able to get home without getting stuck, and we walked home a lot. And mum was and mum was your best bet if you if you wanted to get home. Al although it was a white knuckle and terrifying experience, we referred to her as Sorrel van der Merwe, a rally driver of the time. Um, yeah, what, one of our favourite activities with her was picking mushrooms on George's, um, and eating these involved some trepidation, as you know, wild mushrooms can be a bit dodgy. Um, mum would sniff them, inspect them setting aside the suspect ones, and then cook some, and then eat herself, uh, some herself, and then we were good, so we could eat them too. Um, um, and Dad was sometimes threatened with getting a poison having at the time. <laughs> um, ultimately, my mum was certainly not a run-of-the-mill run of, run of or, con or conventional. She lived her life on her own terms, and we all will miss her dearly. Thank you. Um, so, 
that's it from us. Who would like to come up and actually say a few words? Lizzie, or s Lizzie's okay, all Lizzie right. And Daniel. and Daniel, okay. Thank you. So I haven't prepared anything, but I kind of feel like I have to say something. Sandy was like another mother to me. And when my mum moved overseas, Sandy just stepped into that gap and was there in a fairly tumultuous time of my life when I was young and wild and pretty crazy. And I always felt like I could tell her absolutely anything. There was no judgment, just always complete acceptance and love. A very fond memory that I have of Sandy is racing. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the memories are things that have already been shared, but one in particular is racing along in her little yellow Fiat on those dirt roads, hell for leather, with ACDC blaring and Sandy singing at the top of her voice, saying how terribly she sang, but actually she didn't sing so badly at all. Another really, really special memory is her chocolate eclairs, and both my sons will attest to the fact that she's ruined chocolate eclairs from anywhere else because there's just nothing near as good as Sandy's. Um, and then more recently, before Sandy went into the home, my mum, Ingrid, um, and then Guy, I feel I have to make mention of, of Doris, who was also just very much part of Sandy and Mum and Ingi and Russell and Keith's growing up years. She would have loved to have been here too, I know. Um, and we would all go and have tea at a nursery in Peter Maritzburg. Guy would get there in the taxi from Mpoweni and we'd pick uh, Ingrid up in Maritzburg and we'd all go and have tea and I would sit there while the three sisters and Guy, Kuluma, Isizulu, just like they were having a conversation and I would be none the wiser in terms of what they were saying and just the looks on the staff's face very often was absolutely priceless. We'd all end up having conversations together. So many beautiful memories. Tabankulu was also an incredibly special place and many times I can remember going and staying there and just feeling like that was a sanctuary. And again, Sandy just welcomed me in with open arms and yeah, just really, really special. So that's it. <laughs> Hello, so I'm also in the same boat as you. Uh, I've been trying to prepare a speech, but I couldn't really, but today I sort of thought of what I wanted to say. If I had to describe my grandmother in one word, it would be soft, gentle, and kind. It's been a long time. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've saw my grandmother, but we still have so many fond memories. Be there with you, Alex, walking together <laughs> around Tabankulu, around the Ambers, picking up stupid. Fucking mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> but really, as I look out at all the ancients present here today, <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> I want to show you, I want to demonstrate something about Gran, which is that from what I've heard, she never changed. She was kind, she was soft. And she was gentle from the start till the end. And I think that that can be an inspiration to every single one of us here. I'm going to miss you for a while. But as my mother said, 
the finality of it all really hits hard. Thank you. Anyone else want to say something? Thank you for sharing from your heart. Thank you. So I want to read a couple of pieces of writing that I found really helpful. And I, th I think they will help us walk through this very, very hard time. This is from a book called The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And he's speaking about death. For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing, and when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. And then <clears throat> a poem by a chap called John O'Donoghue. Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or night or pain can reach you. Your love was like the dawn brightening over our lives, awakening beneath the dark a further adventure of color. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze quickened in the joy of its being. You placed smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart. Your mind always sparkled with wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake and complete. We look toward each other no longer from the old distance of our names. Now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our deepest hearts. Let us not look for you only in memory, where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows and music echoes eternally. When flowers brighten the earth, winter has turned to spring. And may this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. Sandy, may you continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our minds and where we will never lose you again. So I've put on the tables here some seeds from this tree and I thought it might be nice for you to take one home with you when you go seems like the kind of thing that Sandy would have appreciated and maybe she nudged me to do it. So I'm just going to close with this short statement. Sandy, go forth in your journey from this world in the name and spiritual presence of your Creator. Journey onwards that you may be at peace with all those who have departed. May you rest where grief and hardship are banished, and light and joy celebrate the presence of our Creator. May the angels welcome you. May you rest in gladness and peace. Go forth upon your journey to rest in God. Amen. Okay, so 
it's good at times like this to just sit quietly for a minute or two. And then when you're ready, we can have a few drinks, have some snacks and carry on chatting. Thank you. Thank you.